amigos, and welcome to the Four Diego's Hot Topic. I'm Rodrigo Rodriguez, and with me today is Warren Diego and Carlos Alberto Diego. Well, today's Hot Topic is all about Alessandro Del Piero, ADP as he's known, Sandy as I know him. Uh, <laughs> isn't it fantastic? He's been here in Australia for two weeks. The question today, the Hot Topic today is going to be, has there already been a Del Piero effect in Australia, Carlos? Oh, definitely. I think uh, not only are we seeing players from around the world now considering coming here, and I can imagine all the, all the player agents of, of players in their twilight who still got a little bit of currency to their game, uh, thinking, oh, gee, Australia's not a bad option. Uh, but you also hear him during press conferences. I'm not sure whether he's been fed lines or not, but every press conference he talks about the project, the Australian project, <laughs> that he wants to leave a legacy here and, and take it to the next level. Now, it's incredible that he that he's, he's got that uh, that charm that David Beckham's got that you want to believe him that you want to like him. Uh, I think the only thing is that's left for him to do is get on the field and start cracking in the goals. And uh, I think then it's just a complete uh, the job is complete. Yeah, don't know much about the guy. He hasn't played in England, obviously, and as <laughs> such, he's not really tested as far as I'm concerned. But uh, he looks the goods. He's a good-looking cat. He's talking the talk. He's got that beautiful accent, you know, the cross between Italian and English. He's going to have an effect simply not only because Italian football is so big with people that grew up in Italy or have come or have got Italian heritage, but I think there's a love of real football. We know him through the World Cup, and so there's an Australian connection there, so he's not completely unfamiliar to Australian fans who aren't of Italian background. Plus... The way that the media's embraced it, and we're talking about all media here, not only soccer media, football media, but right across the board, you just hope, and I mean, I think there's always an if about these things, Carlos, no doubt. You've just got to hope that the performance, I think he's, for it to have a true effect, he's got to capture early on, score a goal in his first game, contribute, them have a win, and then the effect, well, it's a bit like a snowball down the side of a mountain. It's just going to grow and grow and grow. But in terms of, you know, that first game, the Western Sydney Wanderers versus Sydney FC, you know, the two Blues derby, they're going to be huge for that reason. So it's a great effect so far. You just hope, and and the the effect that I want to see, Carlos, in when the A-League starts is that Sydney FC fans, you know, turning up to games in their droves. Because if you've got the Melbourne victory with uh, Ange Postacoglu now as coach and, you know, going under the radar at the moment now, trying to set up a game that uh, is going to be attractive, if if Sydney turns up, it's going to be fantastic for the game. It's going to put money in the coffers. It's going to it's going to give us some international recognition. But you know, it's going to it's going to improve the game Australia wide. But we know that Sydney's cause around about ten thousand people. At their worst, they get ten thousand people. The Cove is fantastic. They have three or four thousand core people that run in that uh, in that fan group. The the big one for me here is is that uh, component of the marketplace that likes football is knowledgeable about football, but does not. They've got this Euro snob element that does not go to A-League at the moment. Well, they're, in, they're embraced by this. They're, they're, uh, they've been welcomed and, uh, and brought in to the bosom of football because of it. And this is where I think we're going to, in one foul swoop, tap into these people all around Australia. Now, the word is that uh, Sydney FC have got members, member requests, quite in large numbers from Adelaide and Melbourne, to become members of Sydney FC. Now, that's what we're talking about. These people who probably aren't following Melbourne Heart or Melbourne Victory, aren't following Adelaide United, uh, who are now interested because of this player. You get Emil Heskey here. Now, I'm not sure that he's going to bring that sort of interest, but he's a credible player. If he plays good football, suddenly there'll be other players coming along. Mm. And, look, Del Piero is a freak in that he is a player of that supreme quality that we never, ever thought would be able to play in Australia or we would ever attract to Australia. So... There's a little bit of danger going forward that people are going to be bringing all sorts of players over and they're going to fail, some of them. But at least we're learning, and the all talk with Michael Ballack, for example, is that the West Sydney Wanderers have, uh, have, uh, are not signing him because of the not only their visa situation, but also the fact that he's a little bit out of condition and he doesn't suit Tony Popovich's you know, fitness requirements and, and motivational requirements, which is really, really important. So we're evolving and, and actually maturing. And so in that respect, I think the, the Del Piero effect has added to things and, and bedded things for us too. And I think we need to be aware, Carlos, if we look at Sydney FC as a, as a little microcosm, you could well have Jason Kalina, yeah. you could well have Brett Emerton and Alessandro Del Piero on the same park 
playing at the same time for one club. Now, three years ago, you wouldn't have ever expected no. three names like that to be playing in mm. an A-League competition in the one team. And don't you think if there's any gun young kids coming out of the AIS or you know, out of the institutes around Australia who are guns, and there's always that, that guy who's going to be the next big thing, don't you reckon he would be attracted to go to Sydney FC rather than going over to some, you know, Holland or Germany and play second division, going to Sydney FC and playing alongside and training with the likes of Del Piero, there's another benefit for our game. And Carlos, I think if you have a look across the board at the A-League recruiting this year, as much as we've focused on players of note going to the J-League and the K-League, in terms of recruiting this year in the A-League, we've had players come from the J-League to Australia. Marco Flores coming back. If you look at every club in terms of the recruits that they've got, there's a real globalisation to our game in terms of players coming from South America, coming from the J-League, Flores, of course. There's, every team's recruited. Every team on paper looks like they're going to be better. So Del Piero is going to be coming into a better competition. So he's going to be challenged, I think, much the same as what Harry Kuehl was challenged last mm. year. What, what, what do you think is going on in the minds of Tim Cahill and uh, Lucas Neal and maybe even Mark Schwarzer, um, who have recently said that you know they've still got bigger fish to fry overseas, and um, even Tim Cale recently when he signed mm. up with uh, New York, basically um, saying that, uh, you know, it's the, the quality of the game in Australia is uh, not, not where it should be. I don't mind players of that ilk as Australian soccer is overseas making their dollars overseas as a career decision. I don't have any problem with that. If they're bigger fish to fry somewhere else, that's fine. But to think because you believe that the A-League's not up to scratch or not good enough for you, that's where you're wrong. And Del Piero and Heskey and other players in the next couple of years who are going to be coming on the back of that who aren't Australian, I think there's the other benefit. Suddenly these guys are going to say, well, hell, am I missing out on something here? I'm missing out on playing with Del Piero in my hometown or against Del Piero in my hometown. So there's another benefit there. Del Piero effect makes these Australian players overseas who I don't believe are all that well informed about what's going back on back here. They're great players, don't get me wrong, great servants for the game and for the Socceroos, but they're not really experts in what's happening back here. And, uh, and I think what, what the Del Piero effect has is get them thinking twice about maybe this being part of their career path and coming back when they can still play. Yeah. I personally say, I mean, I, I defended Tim Carl's right to go and play in America, but on the basis that, you know, he wants to go there for money or whatever, I think they're looking a bit like egg on, it's an egg on face moment because, in all honesty, you ask Tim Cale, he hasn't played with anyone as good as Del Piero in terms of, you know, in terms of actual pedigree. He's played yeah. against a lot of guys. Lucas Neal, never the same. Played great career in England and so yeah. did Tim Cale, but never with guys like that in clubs like that. Harry Kuehl certainly has, but there's not many Australians. And, you know, the yeah. guys at Sydney FC are going to stay at the end of their career or when Del Piero's finished in two years. I played with an absolute legend of the game. And that's an acknowledgement from Italians that yes. he's a legend of their game. Can you imagine, though, the last piece of the puzzle here is he gets on the field and produces. That's a lot. We're not even putting that, taking that into consideration at all. He's done all this in two weeks and in the lead-up, and congratulations to Sydney FC with uh, Tony Pinata and also Lou Sticker, the player agent. But the last piece of the puzzle, if this guy excites on the field, scores goals for fun, then you'll see the incredible, uh, you know, clamouring for tickets yeah. and memberships yeah. and, and shirts and stuff like Imagine that. Imagine Brisbane yeah. playing Sydney in an A-League grand final. Suddenly, uh, Lang Park... doesn't. It's not big enough. 50,000 yeah. <laughs> isn't big enough. You're going to have to find an alternative well, venue. Well, well, the... The icing on the cake will be, Carlos, when the A-League first started, I think you said your dream will yeah. be to fill the MCG. No, to play a grand final at the MCG. And fill the MCG. And, well, yeah, well, What's they, the point? They're, 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 they're going to need 60 or 70,000. Yeah. If Melbourne played Sydney in a grand final, Carlos, your dream would be yeah. realised and then we don't have to hear you anymore. You'd be <laughs> off because everything's happened. Yeah, yeah, well, the, yeah. well, the Del Piero effect so far has been extremely positive and I think we're only scratching the surface to see what really will be the uh, Del Piero effect uh, for Australian football and in particular the A-League. Well, that's it for this week's Hot Topic. Until next time, Ole! Ole!